The Gonzo romantic scheme concocted by a pair of matchmakers from New York City. These women noticed a structural imbalance. Too many single ladies in New York and not enough out in San Francisco. So they hatched a crazy cross-country plan. Could this work? Here's ABC's Paula Ferris. The dating scene in New York is... No fun. Sporadic. Ugh. Dating is exhausting. I've dated puppeteers, I've dated actors, architects, emotionally unavailable people, oversharers. Not the guy. We'd been on how many horrible online dates? Um, I'd been on 115. Okay. I'd been on probably about 60. These two matchmakers know better than anyone just how painful dating can be. And that gave them an idea. Why not send women from cities where there aren't enough dateable men to cities where there are too many? In New York, we had twice as many women signing up as men. And in San Francisco, we had almost twice as many men signing up as women. So we began to put two and two <laughs> yeah. together. Yeah. They raised more than $10,000 to fly 16 New York ladies to San Francisco for a weekend of dates. I am going to fly across the country for love, for love, through the dating ring. But wait a minute. In the movies, New York is like the mecca for romance. Everybody wants to know their true love is true. In Enchanted, they literally dance through Central Park and sing about love. But like Charlotte on Sex in the City. I've been dating since I was 15. I'm exhausted. Where is he? Real New York women struggle to find love. For Melissa, a firefighter whose last relationship flamed out over a year ago. Sometimes I meet all these really great people, but I just don't have chemistry. I just don't see myself dating them. And for Lisa, all of my best friends are coupled up in a very serious way. Some moments are better shared when there's someone else, and when everyone else has someone else, you are all the more aware of how alone you are. Before we take off for California, I just had to ask. You're willing to travel 2,900 miles for a date. You can't be that desperate. <laughs> I don't think it's a matter of being desperate. I think it's a matter of taking charge of our dating situations. Like none of us clearly have found anything that works. And so when something's not working, you try something else. There's a shortage of men who want to be in committed relationships because this city is so fast and there's so many options that it goes against logic right. to settle. As horrible as the dating scene is here in New York City, how can a long distance relationship be any better? Who says that it's going to be long? What if they move for me? Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As the women arrive at the airport, Emma hands them a goodie bag with some dating essentials, lip balm, Tic Tacs, and NYC condoms. This is a long flight for love. Six hours later, they arrive in the Golden State. This one's perfect for tonight. Yeah, okay. I flew across the country to fall in love tonight, so Mr. Romeo better be waiting around the corner for me. At last, the highly anticipated dates kick off. Total strangers on blind dates. My date is going really well. He's totally cute. He's also moving to New York. Four days, 16 women, two different one-on-one -on -one dates, one massive party, and a day to reconnect with a man of their choice. Will Melissa find the chemistry she's been searching for in New York? So far, so good. They set me up with a great match. I'm happy. <laughs> The next day, Melissa is still floating on cloud nine. Can we talk about your yeah. night, please? What happened after you left the oh, bar? So, so my date went really well. And perhaps there was a kiss. Perhaps. <laughs> Soon, it's time for round two. This is Lisa. I hope that they really like each other. I hope that there's some kissing. I hope that, at the very least, there are numbers exchanged. Tonight, new men. How's it going? Some couples hit it off in no time while for others it was, well. It's about 10 o'clock. A lot of the dates have left already with one another. I feel really good about tonight. As the lights dimmed, one couple's spark lit up the room. Just how well did her date go? The next day, we catch up with Becca, an NYU grad student. It was really good. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. What time did you get home? Uh, no comment. <laughs> Tonight, it's party time. 
And right away, we noticed something very interesting. So it's mostly men and our New York women, which they are loving. But for Becca, she only has eyes for one man. And before long. You guys are leaving? And Melissa, she and her date Andrew have seen each other every day since the first night. For some of the other ladies, they have yet to find a love connection, but they're certainly loving the attention. After our cameras left, one of our New York ladies met a very special guy. The next day, she spills the gossip. We get into his car and drive like so far out of the city into the mountains. We got there and I'm immediately like, oh my God, there are stars, I can see stars. And then we like go, go into this like cabin room and you know, have some fun. What up? Yeah, represent. Hey. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty much like the best night and morning ever. We're, I mean, we're, we're texting. I know. Well, and he travels a lot, so he was like, I like, will come to New York. It's now the last night in San Francisco, and Melissa is getting ready for another date with Andrew, but she is a little uneasy. I'm feeling a little nervous because I know it's the end of the trip, so I know we'll probably talk about what that means for us. Either we try to see each other again, or we don't, but what I really want is to like not leave San Francisco not knowing. As Melissa heads out for her date, we catch up with Susanna, who is staying in for the night. This weekend originally started with this beautiful idea of long-term relationship. That didn't happen for me, though. However, I did have a lot of fun, um, and I really connected with a person at the cocktail party. Really strong, immediate chemistry. <laughs> And that's dating. It's going to something with no expectations and rolling with it. <laughs> but sometimes you can't help having expectations and take a leap of faith, only to realize you're the only one who jumped. So they talked and, you know, he doesn't want to pursue anything long distance. So I think that's hard. And sometimes things work out. I really, really like him. Yeah. Um, had a discussion about staying in touch okay. um, and we're going to stay in touch. You must be so excited. Does your face hurt from smiling? Because <laughs> you just look like you cannot stop smiling. After 36 dates and a weekend full of possibilities, these 16 women fly back east undaunted, empowered, and as their matchmaker says, even if nothing happens, it's so much nicer to go back to New York and just be reminded that there are great guys, that you can have chemistry, that you can hit it off with people. For Nightline, I'm Paula Ferris in New York.